So there was this kind of new agey exercise that I heard about a couple years back. And I kind of dismissed it because I thought it was a bunch of BS. But in this video, I want to share this new exercise that I've been doing that's kind of an adaptation of it. And so far, it is the main thing I've been using to change how I feel internally on a daily basis. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the book Master of the Day. Now, I've included the first link below this video is for a free journaling worksheet. If you're trying to figure out how to get your life together and kind of figure out the next steps to progress in your life, check it out. It's the first link below this video and it can help you get started. So there's this idea in Abraham Hicks and in a book called Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. And they talk about both of them individually talk about this idea of a vibrational spectrum. Now, pragmatically, what it means is that there are certain levels of emotions that are associated with positivity and being in an elevated state. And there are certain emotions or states humans can be in that are kind of deactivating, negative, or toxic in the sense that they promote illness. If the longer you are in that state. The point of both of these teachers is that you want to spend more of your time in the elevated states, right? This is like the hippie, new agey vibration thing. But there was something that really, really helped me even more than that. Now, to begin though, let's just quickly look at some of the examples of these vibrational states. Abraham Hicks, for examples, they talk about 21 levels. And here are some examples. The highest level, level one, is joy, love, and appreciation. Level three is excitement or happiness. Level eight is boredom. Level 13 is worry or anxiety. Level 15 is anger. And level 19 is fear and powerlessness. So the base thing here is that there's a spectrum that's correlated with how you feel internally, emotionally, as well as the point of being when you're on the higher levels, you feel better and you usually achieve more. And when you're on the lower levels, you feel worse and are often achieving less. So the second idea here is to recognize that of this list of emotions of inner states, that the ones that are on the higher levels, when you're in that state more often throughout the day, you feel better more often throughout the day. But also, you tend to be more successful at the things you do. Like, think about the best state you ever went on in your life. Were you feeling primarily fear, anxiety, anger, or powerlessness? Or were you feeling excitement and passion? Or you were feeling like this person might be it, right? So you're usually feeling those top-tier emotional states when things are going the best. And the same is true whether it's work or whether it's something you're doing to be happier. Usually the best, most satisfying experiences in work, regardless of how much money you make, are based on is the process in those elevated states or is the process in those de-elevated, decreased states. So here's the thing that really has been impacting my life. You have these, for example, Abraham Hicks talks about 21 levels. David Hawkins has, a, you know, a dozen and a half maybe. But the point is, how do you actually change that state versus, you know, I can't like force myself to feel passion and love if I feel depressed. So here's what I ended up doing. I made a list of all these states and just came up with, for example, five or six. So let's go back to the Abraham Hicks spectrum and just pick the five or six that I used before. So let's say, for example, we have six key states, right? From the most positive to the most negative. Well, how do you change your state? What I ended up doing was listing out all of these levels, and instead of trying to force inner emotions, I came up with activities that were consistently aligned with that state. So for example, the state level 19, fear and powerlessness. What were the things I would do daily that would make me feel fear and powerlessness? They would be working on business tasks, going to a day job back in the day, being alone for too many days at a time, or overspending money. What would be the tasks in my schedule that made me feel level 15, anger? They would be business-related tasks. They would be exhausting myself or not sleeping enough, or being around people I don't like. Now what about level 13 worry? The main tasks or activities my day that make me feel that state are working too many hours, not sleeping enough, and watching news. What about level 8 boredom? I wrote down watching Netflix, being alone, or working on business projects. Level 3 excitement or passion would be seeing patients, studying medicine, working on inspired ideas, as well as going to salsa or bachata class. And then level one, joy, love, and appreciation. The main things in my calendar that I could do to feel that were time with friends and family laughing and having fun, having fun or dating a great girl, and something simple like playing with a dog. So the point here is that when you write down your own spectrum, 
if you're feeling anger or anxiety or fear or even just kind of boredom, you can then pick one of those activities you've predetermined for you, put you in an elevated state and make you feel better internally. So you can concentrate your day and concentrate your energy in those states that guaranteed make you feel way better. So the simple practice here is that when you're feeling yourself be in one of these lower states that Abraham Hicks and David Hawkins and the hippies in California talk about, you can choose one of these activities that you know will help you get there. Rather than expecting yourself to be some mystic or some sage, do one of those things you know is already aligned with the level you want to be in, in your own life. So I hope that helps. If you want help doing this, check out the first link below the video, which is for a series of free journaling exercises, because you're also going to get an email every couple days on how to use strategic journaling exercises to reach your goals. So you can check it out down there below. And then there are two related videos on this topic right over here.